today i am uh, going to start uh, the explanation of new chapter of class 12th chemistry that is chemical kinetics uh, this chapter is basically based uh, on uh, the reaction mechanism uh, the rate of the reaction all those factor that uh, affect this rates of reaction and the collision theory uh, so uh, let's uh, see about uh, all those topic and uh, today is the introductory part of this chapter so be attentive for that chemical kinetics our today's new chapter uh, we all know that uh, chemistry basically in chemistry uh, we deal about various kinds of changes chemistry is the branch of science which is related to various kind of changes we used to study all the changes in which a substance convert it from one form uh, to another form so all the changes which are uh, being dealt in chemistry is basically based on chemical reaction it means anywhere where uh, there we see uh, some of the changes in which the substance with a well defined property uh, changes its form and convert into another substance with a different property so for this change there is a need of chemical reaction chemical reaction takes place for the various changes and uh, these chemical reaction can be of various type on the basis of the speed if we take speed as the criteria so on the basis of this speed uh, this chemical reaction can be of various types so if we will classify it uh, we can see uh, basically on the basis of speed chemical reaction are categorized into uh, three part one is instantaneous reaction another one is slow reaction and the last one is moderate reaction so these all classification are based on the speed uh, of the reaction the first one which is called as the in, uh, in instantaneous reaction uh, it is very fast occurring reaction this is fast occurring reaction these reactions are uh, basically uh, involve actually i mean to say these reaction basically involve the ionic species means these reactions takes place between ions so these reaction involve ionic species this reaction take place between the ions the duration of completion of this reaction is very very less it take 10 to the power minus 14 to 10 to the power uh, minus 16 second this much less time is taken in the completion of this reaction so we can imagine the rate the rate of this reaction this reaction occur at a very fast rate occur at very fast rate so for this reaction for this type of reaction uh, the rate if we want to determine the rate of this reaction it is quite impossible we can't determine the rate of these reaction because it is taking place in very much less time so it uh, its rate can't be determined uh if we want to take uh, one example for this reaction uh, it could be any ionic reaction but uh, one example which i am taking over here is reaction of nsl sodium chloride with uh, silver nitrate agno3 in this reaction uh, double displacement would take place and the product would be agcl plus nano3 so the precipitate which is formed of agcl over here this uh, uh, precipitate which is formed is uh, of very um, fast reaction actually the reaction which uh, took over here for the formation of this precipitate this reaction is very much fast uh, and uh, 
so we can't determine the rate of this reaction so all the reaction which is of this kind in which the ions are involved the uh, reaction used to occur very much fast and so its rate can't be determined so much easily uh, now moving toward the next reaction on the basis of a speed that is slow reaction uh, it involves all those reaction which take place uh, in a long duration it take a lot of time for its completion so these are uh, slow occurring reaction slow occurring reaction basically uh, these reactions uh, are uh, uh, involved uh, in itself either the ions or the molecules or both ion and molecules means it is not fixed that uh, this reaction is uh, uh, containing ions in them or uh, molecules in them it can be any among them or both uh, so we cannot uh, tell uh, that uh, these reactions are involved uh, uh, in itself with uh, ionic species or uh, any of the molecule this reactions take days week and even month for its completion it is so much slow reaction that it takes days month or week for its completion so the reaction is occurring at very slow rate the reaction is occurring at the slow rate and so here also it is uh, quite impractical to determine the rate impractical to determine the rate of reaction if we talk about the uh, example of slow reaction if we are uh, talking about the examples of a slow reaction so the number one is rusting of iron rusting of uh, iron uh, in the presence of uh, moisture and air at room temperature is the example of slow reaction it takes place uh, in at, uh, approximately a week uh, depending upon the condition so this uh, is one of example in which uh, the reaction is occurring but its rate is uh, not uh, practical to determine because of its very much slow nature another example of this reaction is uh, reaction between hydrogen uh, and oxygen at room temperature if hydrogen and oxygen are combining at room temperature without any catalyst even there is absence of catalyst then it would lead to the formation of h2o but it would be very slow this reaction would be occurring very slow um, we all know that hydrogen gas combined with oxygen and leads to the formation of water but in laboratory some catalyst uh, and some temperature is being provided to make it occur at fast rate but if we doesn't uh, provide any of the catalyst and uh, we leave the reactant at room temperature then we would see that the reaction would be occurring at very very slow rate so this is also one of the example of slow reaction going to the next type of reaction that is moderate reaction if we talk about a uh, moderate uh, reaction uh, these reactions uh, occur at uh, normal speed its speed is not too slow and nor too fast it occur at moderate speed here speed is normal speed if the reaction is performed at the normal temperature then its its uh, its speed is uh, uh, practical to be determined performed at normal temperature and speed is determined easily basically uh, these reaction involve the molecular species means this reaction take place between the molecule molecule are involved uh, in uh, this type of reaction Uh, some of the example of this reaction is inversion of cane sugar another example decomposition of h2o2 in the same manner decomposition 
of N2O5, uh, hydrolysis of starch. These are some of the reaction which uh, come under the uh, moderate reaction and uh, this moderate reaction is the only reaction whose uh, rate can be determined very easily. So basically we will deal in this chapter for this moderate reaction only uh, because it is possible to determine the rate of this type of reactions. Uh, now uh, for any type of the reaction um, we are performing. Uh, three thing is very much important to know about that particular reaction. It means for any chemical reaction, uh, chemist or anyone who is performing the reaction want to know or try to find out at least three things about that chemical reaction. So the next thing which I am going to uh, tell you over here is that uh, three important uh, thing which uh, chemist or anyone who is performing the reaction try to know try to know about chemical reaction what are those uh, three things uh, about which a chemist want to know about the chemical reaction let's see what those three things are the first thing which uh, the chemist want to know about the reaction is whether the reaction is feasible or not. Whether the reaction is feasible or not means feasibility of the reaction. Feasibility means practicability. In practically, this reaction is possible. Uh, it is. Uh, it can this reaction uh, be practically performed? Does this reaction have practical importance? This is what we called as feasibility. And uh, if we want to know the feasibility of the reaction, for that we have to know thermodynamics. So whether the reaction is feasible or not, uh, it, its understanding can be developed by the help of thermodynamics. The second thing uh, which anyone want to know about the chemical reaction is the extent, the limit up to which the reaction could proceed and uh, reaches the equilibrium. Next one is extent of reaction. And uh, the extent of the reaction means the limit up to which the reaction could reach. Uh, it could be uh, known with the help of uh, the branch of chemistry known as chemical equilibrium. So if we want to know the feasibility of the reaction, feasibility meaning by practicality, whether the reaction is practical or not, it can be known with the help of thermodynamics. If we want to know the extent of the reaction up to which limit the reaction would occur, it would be known with the help of chemical equilibrium. It is one of the part of chemistry. And the, the last one is the speed of the reaction speed of reaction and factors that affecting that are affecting the speed factor that are affecting speed so if we want to know the speed of the reaction for that we have to study chemical kinetics the chapter which uh, we are studying right now uh, help us to know the reaction uh, speed and also the factor which uh, controls the uh, speed of the reaction so these are three points which anyone should know a chemist should at least know uh, about the chemical reaction firstly the reactions feasibility another one says another one is uh, the extent of the reaction and next one is the speed of the reaction for knowing about the feasibility we have to study uh, thermodynamics for knowing about the extent of the reaction we have to know chemical equilibrium and uh, for knowing the speed we have to study chemical kinetics. So, uh, till here, uh, a rough idea uh, can be um, developed in mind. Uh, you all must be uh, roughly getting it clear that why we study uh, chemical kinetics. Actually, the need of study of chemical kinetics to know about the speed of the reaction and what are those factors which can affect the speed of the reaction. Why we study this chapter it can be um, made clear by knowing this point.
now if we want to define chemical kinetics over here now we can define it as uh, this chemical kinetics is actually the branch of physical chemistry it is the branch of physical chemistry branch of physical chemistry in which we study about the rate of reaction mechanism of reaction and the factor affecting the rate of reaction factor affecting rate of reaction so we can define chemical kinetics as the branch of the physical chemistry which deals with the rate of the reaction mechanism of the reaction and finally uh, the factor which uh, affects the rate of the reaction so now i am going to move ahead in the, uh, in this chapter so before moving ahead i am i want to clear this term feasibility uh, for this uh, one um, example i am going to discuss is that uh, everyone knows that the diamond uh, shall convert into graphite diamond has a tendency to convert into graphite but this conversion of diamond into graphite is very very much slow uh, it's very uh, slow conversion so always and always we found uh, uh, diamond as in the form of diamond only yes it is true that uh, diamond shall convert into uh, graphite but the speed also matters its conversion is as much slow as much slow that we practically find diamond in the form of diamond only so here we can see that the conversion of diamond into graphite is not a feasible reaction it is not a feasible one because it is very much slow so chemical reaction uh, is feasible or not uh, it is uh, being uh, studied in the branch of the chemistry thermodynamics uh, where we, uh, we uh, study that this reaction is practically possible or not but uh, the possibility also um, related with the speed S Uh, of course uh, if any reaction is possible uh, but it's just, it is taking place in a very 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 large duration it's, it is taking very long time for its completion then what's the meaning of that reaction so we can't consider that one as feasible one moving ahead in this chapter rate of chemical reaction what do we mean by saying rate of chemical reaction how can we define uh, rate of any chemical reaction rate of any chemical reaction is actually the change in the concentration of the reactant or the product in unit time how can we define this rate of chemical reaction we can define it as change in concentration of reactant or product per unit time in per unit time how much uh, uh, how much of the change is being observed in the concentration of reactant uh, or uh, product uh, this is what we call as the rate of chemical reaction this is a very simple uh, way to define the rate of chemical reaction so we can write it also in this manner rate of chemical reaction is equal to uh, change in concentration of uh, reactant or product by time taken for the change this is the way we can write rate of chemical reaction in symbolic form r is equal to delta c change in concentration it can be either of the reactant or of the product by time taken positive negative here the positive and negative sign indicates the uh, change of concentration if uh, the sign is positive then it is used to uh, refer to the change of concentration of the product 
positive sign indicate products concentration because in any of the reaction as the time goes on the product uh, the products concentration uh, continuously increase so it is represented with positive sign and if the sign negative is used over here then it uh, represents reactants concentration because as the time goes on uh, the concentration of reactant continuously decrease because reactant is being consumed and converted into product so according to time product will increase in its concentration and reactant will decrease in its concentration so product will be represented with positive sign due to its increase in concentration and reactant will be represented in negative sign due to its decrease in uh, concentration now uh, let's understand it by taking a, a example of hypothetical reaction let a reaction uh, in which a is the reactant which is being converted into product b this is a hypothetical reaction in which a is converting into uh, b now uh, suppose in this reaction at time t1 at time uh, t1 the concentration of a and b is as concentration of a is equal to a1 concentration of b is equal to b1 now at time t2 once again we noted the concentration of this a and b and this concentration of a became a2 and uh, concentration of b became b2 uh, so uh, change in concentration of uh, reactant over here reactant is a so change in concentration of reactant is a2 minus a1 in the same manner we will calculate change in concentration of product here the product is b it will be uh, b2 minus b1 and the time taken for this change time interval this time interval for the change is t2 minus t1 because firstly we noted the concentration at time t1 and then at time t2 so the time duration is t2 minus t1 in which the change in concentration of reactant is this and the change in concentration of product is this one uh, now for calculating the rate of reaction now i'm going to calculate the rate of reaction uh, what we uh, uh, seen earlier rate of reaction change in concentration of uh, reactant or product by time taken so suppose uh, we uh, want to calculate this uh, rate of uh, reaction uh, on the basis of change of uh, concentration of uh, reactant so in here we uh, uh, calculated the change of reactant uh, sorry change of concentration of reactant and that was a2 minus a1 and the time taken is t2 minus t1 so this is what uh, we got an expression for calculating the rate of uh, reaction here we calculated the rate of reaction on the basis of change of concentration of uh, reactant here uh, the change of concentration of reactant is considered now for reactant we will use minus sign over here but we can also take uh, change in concentration of product for calculating the rate of the reaction so or it would be b2 minus b1 by the time taken and uh, it will be containing a positive sign over here so here the change in concentration of reactant by time taken it is change in concentration of product by time taken in either of the manner 
in either of the manner we can calculate the rate of the reaction we have to choose any one of the way either with the help of the concentration of uh, reactant or with the help of uh, the concentration of the product uh, now one important thing which uh, we have to keep in mind is that uh, rate of reaction is always a positive quantity one important point is that rate of reaction is uh, a positive quantity so if we are calculating the rate of reaction uh, with the help of change in concentration of reactant uh, then we are seeing uh, that a minus sign is present over here so to convert it into positive uh, we have to multiply the whole uh, term over here with minus 1 we have to multiply it with minus 1 why because rate of reaction is always a positive quantity it can't be negative so if we are calculating the rate of reaction with the help of uh, change in concentration of uh, the reactant then we have to multiply this whole term with minus 1 so that it could become positive uh, so, uh, what we seen uh, above uh, was the rate of reaction and that was average rate of reaction. So, um, in final um, way we can uh, conclude it as uh, average rate of reaction is equal to change in concentration of product or reactant by time taken R average R representing rate of reaction and average means average rate of reaction it would be equal to change in concentration of reactant by time taken or uh, we can also calculate uh, average rate of reaction is equal to uh, change in concentration of product by time taken. Here negative sign is indicating that according to time the concentration of uh, the reactant is decreasing. Here positive sign is indicating that according to time the concentration of product is increasing. Now I have told earlier that uh, the rate of reaction is positive quantity. So if we are using the uh, 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 using a rate of uh, uh, using change of uh, concentration of uh, reactant uh, for calculating the rate of the reaction then we have to multiply it with minus 1 to make it positive uh, so if uh, we are uh, uh, calculating the average rate of reaction then we and then one thing which uh, we have to keep in mind is that uh, um, during calculation of uh, average rate of reaction we take a, a duration of time and uh, Along that duration, what was the rate, what was the speed of our reaction? Uh, we are considering that. Uh, suppose at t is equal to 3 second to t is equal to 7 second. So t is equal to 3 second to t is equal to 7 second during these uh, 4 seconds. Uh, what was the speed at which our reaction was taking place? What was the rate of the reaction? This is what uh, we are calculating with the help of average rate of reaction. In, it means for the average if we are uh, telling that we are calculating the average rate of reaction it means we are taking a duration of time and along whole that duration the speed of the reaction would be constant and uh, that duration could be t equals to ethna second to t is equal to ethna second it could be anything according to the condition given in the question given in uh, our topic but uh, if we want to calculate uh, the rate of the reaction at particular instant, we are not taking a duration. We want to calculate at t is equal to 3 seconds. At exact point of time, then this average rate of reaction would not be working. Then we need to calculate instantaneous rate of reaction. So let's see what this instantaneous rate of reaction is. So uh, once again, I am recalling uh, that uh, average rate 
of a reaction cannot be used to calculate the rate uh, of reaction at particular instant it is used to calculate the rate of the reaction at the given interval and for that given interval the rate of the reaction would remain constant it would not change if we want to calculate the speed of the reaction the rate of the reaction at particular instant of time then we need another quantity that is called as instantaneous rate of reaction so we will look for it in the next video